Alrighty. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Emily Clark, uh, Information Specialist for NCCMT. Um, I'm the coordinator for the Spotlight webinar series brought to you by the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools. Uh, thank you so much for those of, uh, those of you who have joined us for this afternoon for the Spotlight webinar series. Um, today we will be featuring a, featuring a new tool from NCCMT, the uh, NCCMT Resources Mapped to the Core Competencies uh, for Public Health. Uh, we have just a few housekeeping items to go over before we get started. Um, please make a note there is a Q&A section in the bottom right-hand side of your screen in WebEx. Um, you can post any questions or comments that you have uh, during the webinar. We will have a designated open Q&A session at the end of the presentation, uh, but feel free to post any questions or comments you have during the webinar. Uh, we will answer those as we move along. Um, please post comments in the chat section and post them to all participants, um, just in case other participants have the same question as you do. Uh, we do recommend today that you use a wired internet connection um, as opposed to wireless, just to help with your quality. Um, if you have any connection issues today, um, there is a WebEx 24-7 helpline, uh, which is posted on the slide, um, and we will also post this information uh, in the chat session. Um, something else to note, um, you are, uh, it's not possible to click on links on the slides, um, but any links that we post will also be posted in the chat section, and you will be able to uh, 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 click on those to, to open something in your browser. Um, after today, the PowerPoint presentation um, that you see now will be made available um, in both English and in French. Um, the English audio recording will also be made available um, on the NCCMT's YouTube account. Um, these resources can be accessed using, a, using the link that you see in the chat section. Um, we will have all of these posted within a week of today's presentation. Um, you can also look there for some other past presentations which may be of interest to you. Um, so throughout the webinar, we'll have a couple of uh, polling questions. Um, so here's our first. Uh, we'd like to get a sense of the audience that is joining us. Um, we're just wondering how many people are watching today's session with you. Um, please, please let us know if it's just you, uh, one to three of you, four to five, six to ten, or if you're in a, a larger group. Um, you can answer this question in the poll question panel on the side of WebEx. Um, and just remember to hit submit on your answer. Um, so today it looks like we have quite a few people uh, joining alone um, and a few smaller groups, and that's great. Alrighty, so I'd like to officially welcome everyone to the NCCMT uh, Spotlight on Methods and Tools webinar series. Um, this is our 29th episode of the Spotlight series, um, and today we will be featuring the NCCMT resources mapped to the core competencies for public health. Um, we will be posting links to this tool, um, and we'll have links to the website in the chat section as we move along through the presentation so that you can keep up. Um, just for some background for those of you who may not be as familiar with the um, NCCMT, uh, we are actually one of six uh, national collaborating centers across Canada. Uh, we're all funded by the Public Health Agency of Canada. Um, here at NCCMT, we're located at McMaster University uh, in Hamilton. Um, the other NCCs focus on the use of research evidence in specific public health content areas, um, like environmental health, infectious diseases, um, here we focus on improving the access to and use of methods and tools for health professionals in practice within Canada. Um, it's not so much content specific, but methods and tools that can be applied across different areas of public health. Um, NCCMT has many products and services available through our website. Um, these are just a few um, on the slide. Um, these are just a few of the products and services that we do offer. Uh, many of you may be familiar with some of these. Um, Today we are highlighting a brand new tool, um, so we, uh, which is very exciting for us, and we do look forward to some feedback on that. Um, we also, I do want to point out that we do offer a number of online learning opportunities through online modules, um, links to Public Health Plus, where you can see uh, pre-appraised uh, summaries and a variety of other multimedia tools for you to use. Um, so our second polling question. We're wondering how many of you are familiar with uh, the core competencies that we are discussing today. Um, so we have a couple of different options, whether or not um, you are not at all familiar with them, um, whether you have heard of them, and whether or not you apply these core competencies uh, consciously through your work. 
So again, just after you answer the question, uh, just make sure that you hit submit um, in the bottom right-hand side. Um, so we're seeing we actually have a pretty wide range um, between having heard of them and having applied the core competencies. Um, so that's, that's really great. Um, so yeah, moving on, um, our main presenter today um, is Donna Saliska. Um, she is our Senior Knowledge Translation Advisor um, at NCCMT. Um, and she was uh, um, critical for the development of this tool, and we're looking forward to having her presented today. Great. Thanks, Emily. And uh, Emily did a lot of te <laughs> testing of the tool, so she will be uh, um, uh, adding comments and uh, discussion as we go along. So thanks for the invitation, and thanks for people joining us um, in order to uh, talk about this new tool that we have. So there were a few people who um, said they weren't very familiar with the core competencies. Um, the core competencies uh, were produced in 2008 from the Public Health Agency of Canada, and I understand they've gone, they're in the midst of going through some um, uh, slight word modifications, but basically the intent of each of the core competencies is, is staying the same. And I think they have been used very widely in the development of job descriptions, performance appraisals, um, curriculum for undergraduate and particularly for graduate uh, masters of public health programs. And they've been used for the development of uh, discipline-specific core competencies in public health, so for the public health inspectors or public health nurses uh, and, and others. So I, I wanted to alert you or remind you a bit about these these competencies and where you can find them uh, on the internet. So this first slide is uh, uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada and their overall introduction to the core competencies. And they're listed in um, a downloadable PDF document or they're also on their website. Um, there are 36 competency statements organized in these seven different um, areas of public health practice. When you actually um, Look at the, the skills online. So that was here. If you can see me moving the cursor, okay, you can't see that. <laughs> it's on the right hand side under public health practice from their main page about the core competencies. You can see um, uh, core competence and then skills online. So I'm just going to take you, we've clicked on the skills online, say, and this is um, what shows up. In the skills online, it will take you once, once further to um, a toolkit and the courses on skills online if you click again on the right-hand side. Um, and it welcomes you to the skills online. It tells you the kinds of things that it has available. But I really wanted to draw your attention to the skills assessment tool because I think fewer people know about this, um, this tool that exists with core competencies. It's an, it's an excellent tool to help you look at each of the statements of the, of the seven areas of the core competencies. And you can see in the blue area, question one is, it asks you the level of ability that best reflects your current knowledge and practice. So you do a self-assessment about um, you're not aware all the way, all the way to uh, understand, apply, and synthesize. And the next section is uh, to ask how often you actually uh, are expected to use those competencies in practice. So the, the pinkish section asks you frequency of uh, expected use of those competencies. And the last piece is um, then um, identifying learning needs. So I think using this tool will help you greatly to focus in on which tools are weaker and which tools you're expected to use more frequently and, and identify aspects for learning needs. So if you, if you need to, um, I think you can find it fairly quickly by going to the Skills Online and, and to the self-assessment tool of the Skills Online. So many of you know that on the NCCMT website, we have we have a lot of resources now, and it's trying to keep those organized in a way that people can logically find them as they're moving through um, particular resources. So once you've identified what competencies you would like to improve your skills on, 
We have uh, a number of videos. There are a very popular series that Maureen Dobbins has developed about understanding research evidence. They're very short videos that give you a little bit of background about what, it, what this mostly statistical concepts, what they are, and uh, uh, more importantly, how to interpret them. We have a large section now of online modules that range from very brief, sort of one hour, to uh, a six hour uh, uh, self-directed module where you end up with a certificate of competence as opposed to a certificate of completion for those um, shorter modules. And you can see the, the list of those modules is here. So the motivation was trying to figure out a tool that would allow people to um, easily ad address their learning needs related to the core competencies um, by searching for tools on the um, NCCMT website. So our goal was to get you easy access to resources to support your professional development regarding competencies, the core competencies for public health. Um, and of course, those competencies that are within the NCCMT mandate, because not all of the competencies relate to our mandate, uh, as you'll see in the demonstration. Um, this was not meant to compete with the FACTS Build Online program. They have um, a number of um, online tutorial led um, kinds of learn learning certification, certification courses, as well as some self directed modules. These um, things that we have on the NCCMT website are much more related to um, either a quick introduction to some of those concepts or a reminder for some of those concepts. So this is not in any way meant to replace what you would get through the FACTS Skills Online course. Okay, okay we're just going to switch over to, to the live demonstration. And uh, as Emily said, if you have questions as we go along, please put them in the chat box. Okay, so this is the um, overall NCCMT website. It's just nccmt.ca. And this new tool is found here under resources, the FACTS for Competency tool. So we've been calling it the mapping tool. And this is what it looks like as you, as you get into it. On the left-hand side, you'll see each of the seven areas for those 36 uh, competency statements. And if you want to see each of the competency statements, you just use this this drop-down um, icon that's beside each one. If you are not sure exactly what um, lifelong learning is, for example, this information button will give you the lifelong learning. It tells you the, the entire, um, what, the, what the full statement is from back as opposed to our, our brief um, explanation that we put on so we, you can do the search. Okay. Um, so you can get everything that's related to uh, the, the the major heading, um, or you can, if you've done the self-assessment and you only need to find out, for example, about uh, lifelong learning, you can click on that. This is a good example because what it tells you here is that there are currently no NCCMT resources applicable to this core competency item. So as I said, we've only mapped um, NCCMT resources which are within the mandate of NCCMT. Uh, at some point, it would be great to look at the possibility of uh, mapping all of the NCC resources into a similar document. So you could, you could, it would be more of a one-stop shop for, for finding evidence. That's a possibility for the future. I should also say that um, this is a little bit beyond the beta version, but it would be great to have any feedback or suggestions that you have for making this easier to follow. So if we click on 1.2, okay, still nothing there. Let's say apply public health sciences. Here you can see there are 15 resources. The results say um, one to 15. If you also wanted to know about using evidence of research and you click on that one, it operates as a boole the Boolean term or, if you know about and, or, or not. It includes anything that's in this bundle for 1.3 and anything that's in this bundle for 1.4. So it goes from 15 up to 30 and there are some resources, as you would guess, that have to do with 
um, both. But this search at 30 has taken out those duplicates. They don't appear twice. The other thing I can show you is that um, this, on the right-hand side, it tells you which resources require a login so that when you click on that one, it takes you to our to our learning resource page where you can um, uh, sign in. It, if you don't if you don't have a login, it's easy to develop a login. I'm just going to go back for a moment and then and then log in and show you what happens when we log in. So all of these first resources have required a login, and then we get to some of the other um, resources that are here. So there's this this. this Evidence-informed public health step one, for example, is a very brief uh, video that is not within the learning resource, the learning uh, resource center. It's just um, available on the open page. So for these short modules, you do not need to log in. Once you log in, you only have to do that once. So if I if I put my own login. Should then take away if I yes refresh, refresh that. Where is that here? You'll now see that all of those um, items that said login required are gone. So I can access any of these things directly now through the fact that I've logged into the NCC MT Learning Resource. Um, so let's choose one of these. So this will take you directly to the module about assessing the applicability and transferability of evidence. So it opens another window and will take you to whatever module or video or resource you've clicked on. Um, I could use maybe another couple of examples. So I guess another thing to show you is that the more you click things, it keeps on adding. So now we're up to 42, and we are actually adding in any of the resources that deal with any of these um, competencies now. So I think from, if I go back again to the self-assessment tool, it's not really useful, and it's quite difficult to look through 42 resources at the same time. So I don't think you would ever really want to do that. I think it's better to focus your own learning need on the particular resource, uh, particular competence that you're inter interested in. So let, let me just show you a couple of other things. Um, so this is an example of one of the, the very short videos. And I don't think you'll be able to hear it, so I'll just show you how, how quickly and easily it loads. And you could, you could spend the time watching that. I'm looking for um, more, uh, I've only mentioned health evidence. This would take you to be able to do a search of the pre-appraised systematic reviews, find evidence. So I think that probably it's best to allow you to look at it, this yourself. I mean, for me, clicking through examples is probably not very helpful, but I've, I've shown you the primary ways that this tool is working. And we're just trying to get back to our original slides here. Great. So any questions? Any questions in the chat box? 
Oh, um, can anyone set up a login? Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, anybody, uh, you can set up a login for free on the website. Um, just takes a couple of minutes, asks a few questions. Um, and then you can have that account. Um, it'll keep track of your Learning Center progress. Um, as you go through, it'll save. If you um, only have 30 minutes or an hour at a time to go through the learning modules, um, you can save your progress um, and come back to it at a, at a later time as well. Great. I had just created some slides to, um, in case our live demo wasn't working. So I think. So let's wait a few more minutes to see if there are any other questions. Yes, yeah, so, um, so thank you, Donna, uh, for going over the, the core competency tool. Um, so we will open it up for uh, Q&A at this point. Um, Q&A and at this point, any suggestions or feedback that you might have about, um, about the tool, um, we would appreciate that as well, um, just because we are still um, in the development phase and we're looking for any feedback on how to make this easier to use and more intuitive um, and what you would want to see as a user, how you would want it to work. Um, so we do appreciate any uh, feedback there. There will also be a survey at the end um, and you may uh, type your suggestions in there as well if you don't want to share with everybody. That's not a problem as well. Um, the infrastructure, the software underlying this, um, so we use a web developer, um, their name is MediaDoc, they're based out of Waterloo, Ontario, um, and they set this up for us. Um, they run our website and um, they set up this, this tool for us. Mm -hmm. I forget what the content management system is called. Oh, the um, Turbo enough. Sheets? Yeah. Something, uh, the content management system. You can, you can tell Emily and I are not the techies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, they, they've done, uh, Media Doc has done a great job of uh, getting this all set up for us. So one thought I had that people can respond in chat is when you, when you see the, when you click on one of the um, competencies on the left and you see the resources on the right, we could easily add, add in the timing of each one of those. So. If it's a module that's a one-hour module, that's our estimate of time, or is it a six-hour module as an estimate of time, or is it one of the six-minute videos, or what, what do people think about the potential for adding in the time? Would that make it easier to use? you more likely to pick out um, a shorter one as an introduction versus the uh, longer one. Okay, we've got another question. Um, I really like this database. Is it possible to include all the resources of all six NCCs instead of only one? Um, you could add a field to specify which NCC, MT, which NCC holds the source originally. Um, this is interesting. This is something that we are looking at, um, and we have been in touch with the other NCCs, um, and this is something we're looking at working on uh, in the new year. So <laughs> you're right on track with that. Um, we have another question, um, where do we find the assessment within the website? Um, if you start at the website homepage, um, across the, the top there is a, a navigation menu. If you hit resources, um, it's listed as a resource and it's called um, uh, the FAC Core Competency Tool. But it might have been, the question might be about the assessment of core competencies from Skills Online. And that's in a, oh, right. and that's that's in is in a previous slide. slide. Yeah. Um, and it is this one. Um, but it, I didn't put the URL in. Sorry. It is. It is um, from the from the overall FAC uh, Public Health Agency website. Um, if you search on Skills Online, you, you go through a, a, that phase of finding the Skills Online on the right, and then. When you get to this welcome page for Skills Online, it says uh, self-assessment tool. Perfect. Thank you. Um, um, how long did it take up to set up the architecture of the tool and get this piloted? Um, I don't know. When did we start? <laughs> uh, I, I started with um, the spreadsheet of trying to map the tools to the competencies, I think about February, so in seven months or so. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I mean off and on, you know, um, but yeah, it did take uh, several months, especially because we're working with the web developer, there's a lot of back and forth 
um, and that, that all does, does take some time. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, we have another comment about the, the, the skills online self-assessment tool is printable. Um, so there is a PDF version of it, or it can be downloaded and com completed electronically and filed in your own computer. So I, I know that a lot of people have been doing that as their um, yearly professional development kind of um, uh, uh, file. So a number of disciplines have that expectation that they'll have a, a yearly learning plan where they look at what their learning, learning needs are and they've used that electronic or paper file to help develop learning needs for the coming year, as well as uh, some health departments are using that as part of their, their um, performance appraisal each year. Great. Um, we see um, oh, adding the time and the modality of the resource. That, that makes sense. We do appreciate that. We, you know, we had that actually for a while. We decided it looked a little cluttered, but um, I do think that would help as well with planning. Um, especially as different um, organizations are, are using this as a uh, using the core competencies as a performance appraisal, um, and the full name of the competency statement is not currently displayed. Um, so what we were hoping then is we have the little the little round eye icon. Um, if you click on that, you do get the full description and I believe the full name as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So just in terms of space, it was uh, we were limited on. Space, we didn't want uh, the screen to get too, too cluttered, so um, we do have the abbreviated versions, but if you click on the I, you will see uh, all of it. Great, so if you continue to have any questions, um, please uh, continue to post those. Um, that's perfect. Um, so just, um, we move on. Um, we do have another polling question. Um, we are interested in knowing um, how, uh, whether or not you think that this that this tool um, would be useful uh, in your own practice, um, and whether or not uh, just how useful you think it would be, um, especially as we're investing our time into development moving forward. So we do appreciate that feedback. Um, again, make sure you hit submit uh, once you've selected your response. Um, so most people are saying so far that they do believe this would be um, at least somewhat useful or a uh, majority of people are saying very useful. So we are very encouraged by that. Um, we, we really do appreciate uh, those responses. Um, and as well, your feedback is very, very important to us. Um, we posted a link in the chat section um, that you can click on. Um, so please, if you can take a few moments, um, it's a couple of minutes to complete the survey, provide any feedback you have. Um, both on the tool itself um, and our development of it, as well as the webinar series as a whole. Um, we would really appreciate that. Um, we do use this information, um, we do review it quite thoroughly and help inform um, future webinar series and planning the series uh, for next year. Um, again, the short survey, if you, uh, the link is posted in the chat section so that you can, you can click on it there. Um, and then our very last polling question, um, we're asking, uh, what are your next steps uh, moving on from this webinar? Um, whether or not you would um, access um, the, to the, the tool, um, consider using the tool, um, or telling a colleague about the tool. And for this one, you can select um, as many uh, responses as you would like. Um, again, we do appreciate all the feedback. Um, this is very uh, helpful for us in planning our program. And we still have some responses coming in. Um, it looks like most people are um, at least planning to access the, the tool and tell some, some, some colleagues about it. So we do appreciate that feedback. Um, now, this is the last uh, Spotlight Series webinar for 2016. Um, our next session is planned in, uh, at the end of January of next year. Uh, we will be featuring a guide to policy influence evaluation. Um, and uh, the registration link is posted um, in the chat section. So if you are able to uh, join us for that one, uh, we, do look for, uh, we do look forward to seeing you again there. Um, so for more information, um, uh, if you do have any more questions specifically about the tool, um, please email us um, at the NCCMT email address. Uh, we could forward it along to Donna um, and to myself. 
Oh, we have a few more questions in the QA. Uh, where are those questions? Sorry. Um, our QA window is very small here. Um, okay, so Greg is asking, how were the resources mapped to the competencies? I believe some resources have up to seven competencies identified um, rather than a best fit approach. I think Donna can uh, speak to this. So the criteria that we used in actually saying that one of the resources was related to the competency was that there was what we said sig significant content. So the reason why I think you see so many um, so many overlaps is, for example, there are uh, several different ways of looking at the whole process for evidence-informed decision-making, sort of looking at all the steps. So if you picked the one competency about um, uh, um, policy implementation, program and policy planning and implementation, and it's number 3.5, implementing, well, no, 3.4, implementing um, programs or policies, there are um, several resources within that one that would um, map the general evidence of decision making modules and videos as well as the particular ones that are strictly about the implementation step of that. So that's why there are several resources for some of the competencies there. Okay. Um, and the next question that we have, um, have we seen or heard of anything similar to this for the U.S.? No, I haven't. I'm not, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not that familiar with the competency requirements of uh, either public health or specific disciplines in the U.S. Um, we have another question from Chris. Um, in our planning for new staff to public health, we are building an orientation to public health concepts and competency. Uh, any suggestions from you as to where we start? Um, I'm thinking now that the self-assessment tool may be a great place to begin. Yeah, I think that that is an awesome place to start, the self-assessment self um, tool on the Skills Online, because it will take you to looking at the resources that are on the Skills Online, and I'm sure you know that several health departments have um, had their staff doing some or all of those, depending on their um, needs that have been assessed. Um, and again, these, these resources are meant to be an adjunct to the Skills Online, but I definitely think starting with the Skills Online self-assessment is an excellent place to start for a new staff development. Okay. Um, another question about whether or not um, there is a fee for the course or whether it's free. Yeah, no, there's, there's uh, no fee for any of the resources within the NCCMT. There, is a fee for some of the Skills Online programs because they, they do have a, a moderator, a t tutorial leader. Some are free and some have a small cost. Um, another question, do we plan to expand resources to support competencies that are currently without resources, for example, communication? Oh, um, communication probably, well, it's hard, it's hard to know, but uh, we have to think about what are the priorities for the use of evidence. So, um, sure, I can think of one paper that's now old that we did about uh, communicating with communities about um, uh, small water advisories, for example. That, that might be something that if it were updated, we would um, add it to the resources under communication. So I'm just checking now. I have not seen. I'm so sorry I missed those questions. Our, our Q&A window is, um, is pretty small, so I do apologize for that. Um, I don't see any more questions. Rowan has not let me know if there are any more questions either. So I think we are um, just about finished up here. So um, again, please um, get in touch with us if you do have uh, any further questions about this tool um, or about any of the resources uh, that we have mentioned today. Um, and we do hope to see you uh, at our next webinar. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks.